So, hi guys, welcome back to Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, I have a wonderful, beautiful, amazing co-host, Elfie, from Ballet and Books. And we're doing now the spoilery talk for Sort of Destiny by Andrzej Sokowski. And I said that right on the first go, and I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> by the it's way, go to her. I know, I, you have no idea. <laughs> and if you guys don't want to have any spoilers, go to Elfie's channel where we talk a lot, like 30 minutes, actually more like 50. <laughs> about... Is that how long it's been? Oh my God. It's been 50 minutes <laughs> where we talk about uh, the book without any actual spoilers. But if you don't care about spoilers, uh, this is the time for you to enjoy. <laughs> so are we going to go chronologically? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's try. Let's let's attempt. I have notes, so <laughs> I'm just gonna flick through to where I've like written in here and like highlighted. Oh, you so. write in your books? I love that. I really love let me, that. Let me. If you want, if you if you like that, literally. Oh my god, I love it when people write in books. Yes. Like I love it. <laughs> oh, you put a post-it note, <laughs> girl. I wish that I could travel. To where you are and just like peruse through your library I know like, that might sound weird but I love it so trash because like they're just <laughs> full, like I love that you're oh your your little pop fell oh. I think it was no poor Jon Snow there we go. he's cool he's cool yeah <laughs> he's he's got his head it's fine yeah. <laughs> and by the way I love that you're all about keeping your books pristine and in the end <laughs> I made such like do you know what it was though it was literally where is it because I had where even is it there's like a tiny like mark on here like, <laughs> the corner of the book has a dent oh, on it no. that's what I was upset about that was all that was bothering me and then there's this yeah, and then it's like my book is completely destroyed. I love those books. I love destroyed books. I I used to try to keep my books pristine when that was the whole rage on booktube. Like, remember I told you that? Like, remember when everybody was like, I only buy hardbacks and they have to be perfect. Yeah. And, that, and I was like, girl, I'm buying mass paperbacks and I'm yeah. writing and I'm dog-earing. <laughs> I think it's like they just look so loved when they're like that. It's such a amazing thing to see when someone loves their book so much that there's just like notes and stuff I, yeah I love it I love it too ooh, ooh, ooh. one moment I don't know if we're still recording yes we are okay so let's go uh by order of um spoilers first of all yeah. uh is there anything you want to get to before me <laughs> that is spoilery <laughs> I'm trying to remember what was like the first big spoiler. Um, for me, it was Sir uh, Golden Dragon. Oh yeah, that was kind of incredible, and I freaking loved it because that was the like, such a good character. Yeah, he is. He is, and and I love that he's a legend, and also that he's protecting a baby, and how <laughs> Jennifer is there, you know, yeah. and and, and I. It's, Poor Jennifer, man. <laughs> I feel like she every time she kind of a little bit gets over it, something happens that just throws it back in her face. Yeah. And it's just like, give the poor girl a break. Like, bless her heart. She's just trying yeah. to live her life. And... Yeah. But anyway, I really like the metamorphosis aspect of it. And I mm -hmm. loved how they were, how, was it Gerald? I think it was Gerald that was like, we're not killing a golden yeah. dragon. It's the only one in existence. We're yeah. not killing. And Jennifer was like totally killing it. Just, yeah. just throwing it out there. I'm killing else it. was just like running up the hill with swords. And he's just there like, it's not happening. We're not killing it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at it. Magical. No. And everyone else was just gone. Yeah, yeah. And again, that just shows how Gerald really um, is just a sweetheart. Like, yeah. he's just, that's the thing. <laughs> Gerald is a sweetheart. <laughs> But he's just, like, so, like, tough. And, like, he just goes about killing monsters all the time. But you just want to, like, squeeze his cheeks because he's just so cute. And, like, I can't cope nice. with him. He's nice. And, well, after that, I think the, the, the biggest spoiler e bit is how Sheena is the one that decides that she wants to marry the, what is it, Duke? 
the the man. I thought that that was so beautiful, and how in the end she says love is about making sacrifices. Yes. And I was like, Jennifer, Gerald, did yeah. you not hear the woman? <laughs> I feel like that was like so well done because it was literally like she was trying to tell them. It was just like, can you not just listen to her? Like, just what did she just say? Just pay attention and just go and. <laughs> Literally, the sort of destiny is like plunging into both of you. <laughs> you both are like, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, <laughs> and um, and that leads to Essie and how Essie falls for Gerald and mm. the real tragedy of Essie. Um, oh, that 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 chapter was really hard for me to read. Yeah. It, I don't know if you've ever fallen in love and have that person not love you back. Mm-hmm. And that feeling, I think, was so well described. And the way that Gerald, even though he didn't love her back, because he loves Jennifer, obviously. <laughs> just um, yeah. Like how how he still wanted her to be happy and how yeah. Dandelion writes this beautiful sonnet about them. Mm-hmm. But the reality is that she dies in his arms, not Gerald's Dandelions, of yeah. the plague. Man, oh man. Like, I mean, I loved her from the start and like the whole chapter like killed me yeah. because I wanted her to be like more. But like that, that bit just killed me. I was I can't believe like we've gone through this whole thing of like really falling in love with this character and like how amazing she is and then it was just like and she dies. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I know I me too. I was like what do you mean she dies? She doesn't like, die. She doesn't die. <laughs> she, she's so good. And how she has the pearl that he gives her mm-hmm. until the moment that she dies. And again, that was the moment that my brain switched for Jennifer. Because in the book, spoilery, spoilery, in the book, Jennifer is totally two-timing Gerald mm-hmm. and another guy. Yeah. And the thing is, the other guy does say he loves, he loves her. And yeah. that is the one thing that keeps her there because Gerald refuses to say it because he's a fucking yeah. moron. <laughs> but in the end, when they go to duel, I love that Gerald is like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And the other, um, what they call, are they called wizards or magicians? The sorcerer, uh, the sorcerer. Yeah. He realizes from the beginning that the fact that Gerald won't fight him means that he has already lost Jennifer. Yeah. And I was like... He knows, but, like, they're just so... Both of them, I think, are so, like, confused and hurt, and it's just... It's so well done, and, like, I think the fact that it kind of looked like they were actually going to duel, and it kind of, like, built up to it, and then Geralt was just like, no, this is... I'm not going to do this. Yeah, and... And, and then he just leaves Jennifer and that was like I said the moment I realized how much Essie hurts over not mm-hmm. being loved yeah. was the moment that I realized that Jennifer is just constantly in pain yeah and that is really like I think I think Jennifer I think Jennifer because she's a woman mm-hmm. let's be honest is seen like the bitch character yeah you know, I think if she was a guy, she would be seen like the cool guy character. Yeah. But definitely. because she's a woman and she wants to be a mother. Because yeah. I think that usually cool girl characters don't want babies. Mm-hmm. But but Jennifer is probably one of the strongest sor- sorcerers in the world. Yeah. And yet the only, only thing she wants is to be she's a mom. Gone. She can't have or doesn't think she can have exactly yeah doesn't okay <laughs> you, you said it you said it <laughs> is that only open <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go straight into that we'll get to theory in a moment but jennifer's right the whole time <laughs> i literally i can remember like you messaging me and you were like i'm crying have you read this bit yet and i'm just like i have no idea what you're talking about and i can remember reading it and just sitting there and being like in shock like I can't believe this I know I was because the whole character arc of Jennifer is her pursuing something that is not right that is wrong completely out of the like 
realm of possibilities for her. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are constantly angry at her because it's like, Jennifer, get over it. It's not going to happen. And then you go and freaking find out that Gerald is the son of a sorceress. So it can happen. And I was like, it's, it, I I bawled. I was in. Oh my god! Because obviously I've seen the show. Okay. That, uh-huh. like, I knew kind of like certain things were going to happen, but like reading it and the way it was written, it was just like I just can't cope. And like you just see that like the really sensitive side of Geralt as well. Like when he's with his mum and like she loves him so much and just I'm like, gonna cry. Know, it was just like the fact that like he was so desperate to talk to her. And she, and was, she couldn't talk to yeah, him she was because it was painful for pain. her. Yeah. So oh my god. And how after he wakes up and and uh, I don't remember his name. Jurger? Was it Jurger? I think it's Jurger. Something like that. And he tells him how she stayed up day and night mm-hmm. on next to him healing him to the point where she was bleeding and yeah. then he keeps talking and then it was and he says like her touch was like and then Gerald interrupts and he goes like the touch of a mother and I was like I think the thing is like we said earlier like he's meant to be this character that just has no emotion and no like emotional connection to anyone else and then like that one scene just blows it all out of the water and it's just like he just desperately wants her to tell him why she did what she did and why he's been so lonely and it's just like and I think it also opens up the door for why he's such a different witcher because he was born out of a person who shouldn't have had had who shouldn't have have had who shouldn't have had a child so maybe yeah. there is something about him that diff- makes him different yeah. or maybe or maybe not you know maybe it's just he is the way he is and that's it yeah. you know and I re- that chapter with his mom I think is probably my favorite chapter in the entire book it's so emotional it's so heart-wrenching and heartbreaking and he and but when they say goodbye and she says um that the person that raised him wasn't the one that gave him that name yeah. and you understand that, that she oh <laughs> that bit killed me because it was just the way he was just like you didn't name me that and then she was just like they weren't the one who called you that and he was just like oh, I can't oh my god I see it <laughs> I cried I cried so much reading that that chapter um and and I liked that they kept it brief and it I liked that there was a certain separation between them because I think in in books oftentimes um when you find oh this is your long lost mother and everything mm-hmm. it, it it becomes a bit melodramatic yeah. and again with the beautiful writing here where it's just like it doesn't have to be melodramatic it's just mm-hmm. what it is and what it is is two people that don't know each other that share a bond that yeah. they can never truly have which like mirrors the relationship between him and Jennifer yeah it's just it's so well done it's beautiful it's just like I can't I, that chapter is just like yeah, and and I just and and that chapter just revealed so much, and and I just kept thinking Jennifer's right, Jennifer's right, Jennifer's yeah. right. You know, like she can have what she is looking for, and now what this opens up is the door to how do we get here? Yeah, you know, and yeah, that I I think that oh I don't know I just I loved Jennifer so much throughout this like not the entire book when I found out that she was cheating on Gerald I was like girl <laughs> they, <do laughs> cheating is never. obviously like I, I like her more now than I did when I was just watching the show but I knew that you like you really liked her and I didn't really like her that much and then yeah. when I saw that bit I was just like okay maybe <laughs> maybe we'll be on the same page for a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah I, I I also think I like her because and 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 this is getting like super personal but i think that characters like jennifer personalities like jennifer are usually written as the bad person in the yeah. story 
you know, and the whole ambitious thing, you know, Slytherin being ambitious and women that will do anything to, mm-hmm. to you know, achieve a means when men are written like that and it's fine but because this is a woman and she is so much more powerful than all the men around her I think that that subconsciously makes people not like her as much also she's kind of a bitch let's be honest but (laughs) but I think if she were a man like if if you people switch, would feel so much differently about her. Definitely. Yeah, I think so. And I and I well, see now I'm having a whole fanfic where Jennifer's a guy and Gerald's a man, and <laughs> you know, like let's we're not gonna go into that. But I really really appreciate a character like Jennifer that mm-hmm. is kind of like this is what I want, and I, I don't care who I have to hurt to get it. Not that yeah. I not that I think that that's okay, but I appreciate female characters like that yeah yeah and I also appreciate that she that she wants to be a mom like that's such a strange thing for a character like Jennifer you have everything you know eternal youth um power the 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 most powerful men in all of your country world thing fighting over you but that's nothing like that's not what you want (laughs) yeah she just she doesn't care about anything other than the fact that like the one thing she wants more than anything she can't seem to get and I think that's just like it is brutal because you just the whole book you're just thinking like you up until that point it's like well she's never gonna get it and oh and then suddenly it's like (laughs) and then and I wonder if Gerald will ever tell her that he's the son of a sorceress because that will destroy her or it will drive her even more crazy like it will drive her to the extremes of crazy because the thing is I mean when I saw that I thought oh that's really interesting but then like Geralt can't have children either or can he (laughs) exactly so it's just like well if they now figured out that like she can have children but then like there's going to be even more heartbreak because he still can't or like can he I don't know but and the other thing that that like now that you mention it I love that they don't care about that stuff in fact remember Jennifer told Gerald Mm -hmm. in his like crazy dreams that he was having while he was taking Mm -hmm. the potions to heal himself she was like go to Kalanthe and don't run away from your destiny anymore yeah and I think that Jennifer knows that he's gonna that that he's looking for a child you know and I think she doesn't care because in the end I think Jennifer loves Gerald to the point that she wants him to be happy yeah and and I think that that's like the most beautiful thing ever in the world yeah and and also they love each other to the point and and I think that that's something that is rarely touched upon in like literature or any kind of media Mm-hmm. They love each other to the point where it's like, so you slept with someone else? Okay, well, that sucks, but I still love you, and mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I really do yeah, appreciate like there that. Was, there was hurt in that chapter, and there was, like, you could see how much of an effect it had on him, but, like, it wasn't to the point where he was just, like, there was any arguments or anything he was just like well this is really really shitty but I love you anyway exactly and I love that he didn't use any of the derogatory terms for women that sleep with more than one man you know I I love that he had his moment of duel and pain and and I'm not saying again I'm not saying that I think that this is how it should be in real life but I'm saying that I appreciate that it was done this way in the book you know because it's always done the other way and it's interesting to see them actually make a point of it being like this for once and exactly and 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 within the story again I just don't want people to think that I think that it's okay to go around cheating on your spouse you know but within the confines of this fantastical world that they live in Mm -hmm. I think that really shows a lot about their true feelings for each other and how they are each other's true love. Yeah. Where it can be to the point where, like, and that he knows, I, Gerald knows he's going to be, that she's going to pick him. And that's yeah. why he leaves her. Yeah. Because this man can give him, can give her 
the only thing that he can't give her, and that's yeah. to say the words. And all the while, I'm like, Gerald, just freaking lie to her and say it. I don't care. <laughs> Just tell her you love her and it'll all be fine. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, like, just tell her. And the worst thing is, I think even if he did tell her and Jennifer didn't believe him and mm-hmm. she just thought that he was telling him the words just to hear the words, yeah. she wouldn't care. I don't think she would care. It would, still, it would still be enough for her to know that he cares about why she hurts that he's not said it. And that's the thing that, that like, frustrates me. I'm like, she doesn't care that you don't actually think you feel it. Because you totally feel it. You totally feel it. Man. <laughs> like, like, you just don't want to admit it. You don't want to admit it. But you totally feel it. And you just can't bring yourself to tell her. With mm-hmm. a, which, again, is so beautiful. Because he doesn't want to lie to her. I don't, I don't know. I, I, look, I know there is another character that becomes his love interest. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know right now that I hate her already. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where we're gonna struggle because, like, I I like her, but like, I'm still like, I can't cope with him and Jennifer. I'm like, just just deal with your stuff, get over it, yeah. and be happy. This is just you need to just bang each other's heads just and then fall in love. Yeah, but, but I think it's really cool that we have like that kind of like different point of view, you mm-hmm. know. Because if not, if, if it was just us agreeing all the time, it'd be kind of boring. <laughs> no, just like constantly fangirling over that relationship. Just like, please just fall in love because just yeah. tell her you love her and just Look, deal with I, I, like, I want them to be together so much that I would have hated Essie if he got with Essie. That's how much yeah. I need Gerald and rigging Jennifer to like end up together forever it's kind of like Cersei and Jamie but we're not gonna get into that <laughs> yeah, that's another video <laughs> that's for another day but yeah I I definitely and I love Jennifer as a character but I really do understand why people don't like her as a character yeah. because I understand that when especially again when women are selfish and when women and which which are not good things but particularly when women have these traits people don't like them and I mean it's okay not to like a selfish um cheating kind of evil person (laughs) I just have a I just just have a soft spot for these people okay (laughs) and also the reason that the way like the reason she's the way she is is because she's hurting so much and I think that's the thing that when you realize that even if you don't like her because of the things she's doing you still love her because you you feel it and you know that like she's not doing it because it's just the way she is she's doing it because of things that have happened to her and it's just like it is intense it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful it's beautiful and uh, and this is what i want when i say that i want three dimensional female characters yeah you know? um i think a lot of the times we forget that by writing three dimensional characters we also have to write the ugly. And for female characters, I think that we don't want to see anything ugly because let's face it, we are basically the like the victims of ugliness all throughout <laughs> history. But I I think that writing the ugly parts is important, but not chastising. And I don't think the book chastises Jennifer. On yeah. the contrary, I think the book like shows you, hey, this person might not be the best person. But when it comes, like when push comes to shove, she does the right thing. Like yeah. caring, like telling Gerald to get his like act together and go get Siri. Yeah, I think that's the thing, it's just like she's there's so many situations where you're just like, what are you doing? This is not gonna end well. Like when she's with the gin, oh my god, and I was just like, this is just how is this ever gonna end well for you, Jennifer? And she's just yeah. still completely convinced that it's gonna end well. And Gerald's like, you're literally gonna kill everyone including yourself and me can you please just stop um but then like, and she, can. Other bit. And she mm-hmm. can and I love that because her ambition is so grand yeah. and she would rather she's these she's this person that she would rather die trying than not do it not at try. all yeah and or that or then fail and I I feel that on a personal level again like <laughs> I, I think that the thing is, I, I, I see a lot of myself in Jennifer, which might 
not be such a good thing, but I don't care. But I see so much of myself in her that I understand her. That's the thing. I completely understand her. And it also helps that somebody said that I look like the actress that plays her. (laughs) That's so true. And they describe her, like, with dark hair and, like, dark eyes and everything. (laughs) So I think I'm just kind of projecting a little bit, you know? (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, and going back to Siri, mm-hmm. all right? The first time they meet in the forest, we, we talked about that in your video in the non-spoilery, yeah. where it's really cute. But I think that the part that I wanted to talk about was when she drinks the elixir that mm-hmm. is supposed to, like, transform her to follow her destiny. Yeah. And she chooses Gerald. And Gerald thinks that he's being played like that this isn't the real elixir and then he tries it and it is and this little nine-year-old spoiled brat was strong enough to resist this and say this is my destiny I was like yep love this character (laughs) I love it so much and I just love the like the fact that like Geralt's so disbelieving and he's just like this cannot possibly be what's happening right now and he's just like I just yeah it's just it's so well done and I think like the two characters they work so well together I want to see them older I think in the show they show them like when she's older Mm -hmm. in the so I'm really looking forward to in Blood of Elves seeing her as an older uh young lady (laughs) I think it'll be really cool to see her grow up and like see the way that like Geralt changes as well because obviously like he's got this presence in his life now that he's got to kind of take care of and like destiny's playing its part but i think it'll be so interesting to see the way that like his character develops like along yeah yeah i also want to see because okay i i've seen the witcher um games the Mm -hmm. like i have never played them but i have seen the like game itself the covers so i know that siri eventually becomes a witcher Mm -hmm. or i think she eventually becomes a witcher. Yeah. I want to see what that does to Gerald and how he makes that decision. Because yeah. I don't think Gerald enjoys being a witcher. And he, look, let's just say he loves Siri. He basically says it at the end of the book. Remember, yeah. I put it on Twitter. You are, you are so much, you are that and so I much more. <laughs> Find it. Find it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that that's it. You are that and so much more. Yeah, say it. Am I your destiny? You're more than that, Siri. Much more. I can't. I can't. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like so, Daryl. We are basically saying that we can love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, can we please get over this whole I can't love thing? Because yeah. clearly. <laughs> so um, I'm. I'm really looking forward to to reading about him showing her his ways. Yeah. And also about I in my mind, of course, because I I haven't read it, I think he's going to try to protect her from being what she is meant to be. But as this mm-hmm. book has shown, destiny is destiny and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Yeah. Which I love books like that. I it's, love that. Yeah. It's so it is it is I just I can't get over how well this book is written and like I the know. way it just makes everything so perfect and just oh it's just it's it's so well done I can't like I have such a hard time trying to like put into words the way I feel about this book because there's just so much that I love about it yeah exactly and and I don't know there's uh, it's just the simplicity of it that (laughs) that really gets me I think that that's the the part where I truly feel like I want more of that in in, mm-hmm. in in general. I think there's a like a trend right now and with with books like from Lainey Taylor, Erin Morgenstern, yeah. where the more complicated the book is to understand makes it better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um Night Circus. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna get into that one. You're reading that this month, right? I'm meant to be, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm I'm so looking forward to, to your like your thoughts about that because mm-hmm. I have thoughts about that book. <laughs> um <laughs> although I will admit 
I read it. I read it in Spanish. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because I read it from my library. Like I was like, oh, I've heard a lot about this book, and I saw it in the library, and I read it, and I remember I was like, this is not as good as people said it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know so I wonder if I read it in English it would change my mind now that I think yeah. about it yeah because I remember I tried to read Dune in Spanish no <laughs> yeah. you should you should have seen you should have seen me I was like what is happening what is going on and then um, I read it in, and then I stopped and I was like I'm gonna just gonna get the English edition and I got the English edition and I fell in love with the book so yeah. I wonder if I should give Erin Morgenstern a, a second chance mm-hmm. in English probably now that I think about it that makes sense it might, it might change like the, the whole experience yeah 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 but well but I, going back to the whole, I think that there's a trend now, uh, and also with dark academia being so popular, yeah. um, I think there's a trend of the more SAT words you put into your book, <laughs> the, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah which, which I think is ridiculous. I think that, that that's not necessarily it. I mean, I just finished reading The Picture of Dorian Gray, and there is nothing about that book that you would misunderstand or that you would need like a dictionary next to yeah. to understand. And it's still beautiful. And I feel that the that the Witcher series so far is mm-hmm. like that. I don't need to get a book to figure out what you know what anything means. It's just yeah. brief to the point. I don't need a description of the whole landscape, which I'm sorry, I know that you love Tolkien and he does that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's I think the thing is it's so to the point and it's so like it is what it is there's no fancy like description it is just completely to the point and it's so well done it's such beautiful and simple writing it works so well for like the story and the characters yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And I can't wait to read more, honestly. Uh, I'm reading... Uh, are you reading Blood of Elves this month? Um, I haven't I haven't got it, but I need to I need to get it, actually. I might have a look on Amazon and pop it in the basket, because I haven't got it yet, but I do need to get yeah. it. Well, I don't know how, uh, if it in, in the UK it's the same, but it's actually six euros right now mm-hmm. in Kindle edition. So... Oh, okay. I'll so that- charge my Kindle up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used my Kindle in so long. I actually got it for my birthday, and in the beginning, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't because I'm I need to feel the real book, you know, like that kind of person." And now I buy like <laughs> you you need to charge it, home. <laughs> and like, now I it in so long, it's just angry with me. <laughs> yes. it's like your Tamagotchi girl. Yeah. <laughs> you can beat it. <laughs> But no, I am so happy that I got the Kindle. Also because of my limited space when it comes to bookshelves. Yeah. Um, I really wish that I... Well, no, I don't wish I had more space. I keep saying that I wish I had more space. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I'm kind of like a reductionist when it comes yeah. to things. So I don't wish I had more space. I wish, I wish my husband had a different bookshelf. So that I could have my bookshelf and he Just could have yourself, his bookshelf. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I wish. But um, I think the Kindle is such a great, great invention, or any ebook reader, honestly. Yeah. And I, mine is waterproof, so I can read. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> I was actually because like, I've got my like this is like one of the older ones, I think. So this yeah. isn't the waterproof one, but I yeah. have got. Oh, where is it? There it is. In, in a little case that my grandma made for me oh um gosh. it's like the Kobo so again I need to charge it but it's like <laughs> so tiny I love it so much like it's so tiny yeah this one is like if you put it against my face it is really tiny and I oh wow yeah it's very <laughs> small <laughs> I have to go because I have to prepare my class all okay. right so if you want, we can do this more often. I really enjoy talking yes. to you in person. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to like have like a monthly like random chat video where we just like talk about. We should about do that, stuff. like like a that monthly just chat, kind of like mm-hmm. podcast, 
podcasty. Yeah. Like, what have you read? What have I read? And yeah. and me yeah. hating on everything on book two and you being sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> All right. It was so well, nice talking to you. You too. Have a good have a good afternoon. I hope work Teaching. goes well. <laughs> it probably will because today is what today is one of my short days, so it's gonna go really well. <laughs> I'm gonna try and write some more of my drafts. So. All right. <laughs> if you ever need a beta reader, I'm just saying. <laughs> I did say it. My mum was like, "Who are you gonna send your book to when you finished it?" And I was like, "Well, I'm gonna send it to Monica, whether she wants it or not." So. <laughs> I love that you talk to your mom about me because I talk to my husband about you all the time. <laughs> like Monica's getting it whether she wants it or not. So. Yeah. Well, I want you to know that if when I finished my draft, my first draft of <laughs> the book I was telling you about, uh, you're totally the first person I'm sending it oh to. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> also, I'm going to go and try and plug this in and then I can edit this video in like... All right, I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, I think I'm going to have to send you the video. We'll see. We'll see. This is going to be an experience for the both of us. Okay, because okay, I've, I've, like, downloaded, like, a screen recorder, so I'm hoping it's caught the audio as well, but I'm going to have to, like... Okay. I don't My, really know. <laughs> I recorded it directly from Skype, so... Okay. Oh, and it's, just so you're, you know, it's one hour... 49 minutes and so far 45 seconds long <laughs> oh my god yeah That's it doesn't so right. feel like we've been talking that long I know I said to my mom I was like I'm just gonna go on this video with Monica and then I'll come and do the dishes and she was like oh, okay cool I was like that was like two hours ago <laughs> <laughs> all right Elsie thank you cool. so much I'll no see problem. you later see you soon. all right bye <laughs>